and it said, um, can you explain Luke um, 1927? Um, she said Muslims seem to always misinterpret this. Oh, yeah, they do. I, I, have, a, I have an entire, uh, matter of fact, I think I have more than one video on that. But um, uh, yeah, Luke 1927 is a sort of uh, desperate attempt to respond to uh, claims that um, Muhammad ordered his followers to fight people until they become Muslims. That's, that's a direct quotation from Muhammad. I've been ordered to fight people until they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So you have violence in Islam. You, you have the Quran calling for the violent subjugation of Jews and Christians and um, uh, polytheists, everyone. And so uh, obviously people are concerned about that. And in response... It's very common to say, oh, but look at violence in the Old Testament. It's pretty easy to respond to that in terms of um, this being a supposed parallel to Islam, because, you know, you point out, look, Joshua being commanded to, uh, to fight a group is not the same as Christians under a new covenant being called to fight some, some group. Um, but in, in Islam, the final marching orders are to violently subjugate people. Um, in Christianity, it's not. In Christianity, the final marching orders are to love even your enemies, to pray for those who persecute you. So Muslims kind of have to find some sort of uh, verse, some sort of command from Jesus that's uh, calling on them, I mean, that's calling on Christians to go out and kill. And so the best they've been able to come up with, uh, and this goes back to Didot, and this is why um, when Ahmed Didot and Zakir Naik cite this verse as a command of Jesus to kill people, they immediately discredit themselves and show that they are deceivers, right? Because when a Muslim brings up 1920, Luke 1927 and says, isn't this Jesus commanding Christians to kill people? I, I, I give the Muslim the benefit of the doubt and think he's just very poorly informed. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He heard this from someone else. He heard this from one of his apologists. And because he trusts the apologist, he thinks that it's true when he should have looked up the passage and, and seen what it says. Uh, but when Ahmed Didat or Zakir Naik or other Muslim apologists quote that verse, I'm pretty sure they've read the chapter. And if you've read the chapter, you know that's not Jesus commanding his followers to go out and kill anyone. And so any person who's read the chapter and says that this is Jesus commanding his, his Christian followers to go and kill uh, is a deceiver. That, that's, or, it's, or it's a person who is so incredibly stupid, he can't read a passage and figure out the basic meaning. But what you have in Luke 19, um, Jesus tells a story. He tells a parable. Now, the parable has meaning, and it, that, that meaning relates to his uh, second coming and so on. But as far as the parable he's telling, he tells a parable about uh, a person who goes away, a nobleman who goes away to receive a kingdom. And this was something that actually uh, happened in, in history. He's, he's referring to something that happened. Um, but uh, he draws a parable out of it. And the person goes away to receive a kingdom and his subjects rebel against him and he receives a kingdom. So he comes back and he's the king. And when he returns, he finds out that he's, his subjects have rebelled against him. And he says, as for those who rebelled against me, bring them here and slaughter them before me. It's a king in a story who orders this, but Muslims quote it like it's Jesus telling his followers to go out and kill. Now, how many of Jesus followers went out and killed when they heard him say that? None. Why? Because he's telling a story, right? He, they understand, hey, this is not a command to me to go out and kill. This is a king in a story going out and telling people to kill. So notice what, what Muslims do here. As I was just speaking, I said the words, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to rule over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. I said the words. Is that me telling anyone to kill? No, I'm quoting what's in a verse that's part of a parable. Well, th that's the same thing. Jesus is, Jesus is telling a story about a king, right? Muslims rip it out of context, completely distort the meaning, and then pretend that this is Jesus commanding his followers to go out and kill. And the fact that Muslim apologists like Zakir Naik and Ahmed Didan uh, have done that shows that they are not to be taken seriously and that uh, Muslims who do take them seriously, you need some better apologists because there, there, are, there are Muslim apologists who are better than that. Um, so, yeah, don't follow people who deliberately distort texts. Here it is. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Abdul S., uh, I see, responded. And he says, David, stop lying. Luke 19.27 is a parable, notice he grants that it's a parable, about the Messiah, i.e. Jesus himself, who leaves the earth and then returns for his second coming. He will slaughter non-Christians in the future. Now, notice what he just said. One, he granted that it's a parable. Two, he called me a liar. 
Didn't I start out by saying that this parable is about the second coming of Jesus? Didn't I start by saying that? Go, yeah. go back and watch the video. I started by saying that. So he just called me a liar for not saying exactly what I did say. So anyway, this is the, this is the level of uh, Abdul S here. Um, but look at what he just said. He's just refuted his own point. He says this is about Jesus coming in the future to judge. Well, if, it's, if that passage is about Jesus coming in the future and Jesus is going to judge, and by the way, by the way, uh, the account, the words of Jesus say that it's Jesus and the angels who are going to be doing the judging. But yes, that is going to be a judgment. Yes, unbelievers are in trouble at that time. Does this have anything at all with to do with Christians being commanded to go out and kill? No. When's the judgment? When Jesus returns? Has that happened yet? No. Are Christians supposed to be killing? No. Are Muslims supposed to be going out and killing? Yes. Are the two situations the same? No. Thank you, Abdul S., for helping me prove my point. And you proved it with your own words. You said it's about Jesus' second coming. And, <laughs> yeah. called, and, and called me a liar. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that is what it is about. And uh, that is really what David was saying. You just basically gave him a chance to explain it in further detail. But we don't deny the fact that Jesus is coming back as the reigning king in his second advent. I mean, that's common teaching of scripture, but that's not the way that some Muslim apologists try to contort or distort what it's saying when they take that parable and do exactly what David was talking about. And he gave the examples of Zach and Nike. Oh, oh and, 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 and by the way, uh, Abdul S since uh, now, <laughs> now notice, uh, notice the problem here. We, we do have a problem with we're, we're talking about a topic and then everyone's jumping all over different topics, uh, which is yeah. fine. But, for those who are particularly interested in this topic, we're going to be discussing like peace and violence stuff in Christianity and Islam, right? We're going to have these on one of the broadcasts, right? Is That's that a what plan. The broadcast coming out? Yeah. So, yeah. so we're going to be discussing this and we're happy to revisit this. Uh, but notice Abdul S now he said, you said it had to do with a nobleman, right? Right. It's a nobleman who goes away to receive. That's the story. I said, it's the story. I said in the parable, the parable the parable ultimate parables have a meaning outside of the actual story. I said it's a parable that ultimately refers to Jesus' second coming, but in the story, it's a nobleman who goes away to receive a kingdom. He comes back as ruler and judges the people who rebelled against him. That's in the story. So I, I don't, guys, yeah, if you <laughs> if we say something that is an indisputable fact, and you're granting that it's an indisputable fact, and the text says exactly what we're saying, and you're shouting liar, 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 that may help you in certain uh, Islamic circles where all you have to do is sit around calling people liars all day, and that, that somehow convinces them that you're a liar. But if you're, if you're in the chat box here with a bunch of people who just heard what we said uh, and people who are able to open up the text and read it to confirm what we're saying, and you're shouting liar, 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 you're discrediting yourself. So I'm, I'm trying to help you here. Take some advice, calm down. Don't be as quick to toss out accusations that immediately refute what you're saying. And you'll have you'll do a better job convincing people of your position. So all right. Yeah.